there guys welcome to another exciting episode of lineal talk where we talk about issues that affect millennials and how to deal with them throughout this month we have been talking about different sectors and business opportunities in these sectors we talked about entertainment and we also moved to the stock market this week is not going to be any different as we will be looking into agribusiness now when it comes to agriculture and the agri agricultural sector in general um, it is very very unutilized in nigeria i believe there should be a lot going on in nigeria when it comes to agribusiness but you know the potentials in this country have not been properly utilized what do you think Bukumi? yeah just as Josephina said you know there are opportunities for especially young people in the agricultural sector but in nigeria looking at the um the way it's structured agricultural sector is divided into Four different areas we have crop production livestock fishing and forestry now looking at the data and the gdp figures it shows that in q2 2021 the agricultural sector advanced by 6.36 percent and in q1 2021 it advanced by 15.14 percent and even looking at the data from q2 2020 even during um the covid 19 pandemic it was still thriving it was most of the uh, figures are in were in positive you know positive territory and this is something that shows that it has opportunity to thrive now discussing this you know this um having discussion with us is mr aki alabi of corporate farmers international hi sir it's hi. nice to have you here having this conversation with thank us. you very much it's an honor to have you guys too. welcome to the show we <laughs> like you. your trad attire you're looking great this morning yeah it's, well, well yeah it's um, part of the part of the brand yes. Yes. Culture. <laughs> definitely, definitely culture definitely. so um give us a brief introduction about yourself and tell us why you went into um agriculture okay uh that if you start on that, actually, it might take a long day, but I'll just, you know, break it down. Okay. Uh, my name is Aki Alabi. Uh, I'm the visionary and also the co-founder at Coinfirmers International, also known as CFIL. So basically, we started this um, this vision, started about uh, more than 20, 20 years ago. Wow. Yeah, it, 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 started like, it started like a joke, actually. Mm -hmm. I actually started when I finished uh, service. Mm -hmm. So I was working with um, a financial institution then. You know, so something struck me then, like, look, we need to create, um, then there was more, you know, then we have the old Linda Ikeji, mm, then, yeah. you know, um, so so there was more of the blogs, you know, running then, you mm. know, so I said, look, uh, I've not seen any blog that could speak about agriculture. So I created uh, what we call the public farmers blog spot. Mm -hmm. then you know as as a fresh graduate so i was so we, the basic idea was to now bring content across africa and the world you know and dump it on the blog spot so to share so it's an extension service for the agri you know sector so i was sharing content you know i'm plucking from different institutions organizations fao ita i bring them and dump them on, on on the blog spot so over time it was beginning to add value you know back value to the extent that we got uh, a call from then uh, uh, Olubu Chegomba Sonjo Foundation, you know, to feature one of their programs, you know, online, and that that gave some credibility, mm -hmm. you know. Then after that, you know, we we started attending conferences, talking about the blog. Then we now moved it eventually to social media. Mm -hmm. So we now take the space of you know, social media, you know, talk about like culture, experience services, the players, you know, everything. So over time, it now developed into a full flesh company, mm -hmm. which you see here today, uh, whereby we have partners like my, my co-founder, Prince Adi Ajayi. Uh, we have directors, uh, Dr. Adebayo. Uh, we have a lot of partners across the world, you know, so, uh, across. So, so today, uh, I could say confidently that it's a multimillionaire company mm -hmm. that has grown over time. And our focus is basically on four different um, business models. Uh, one of it is uh, farm management and services. So it means that we manage firms for clients from cultivation to harvest, then to market. Then we also have the capacity building and the, uh, capacity building and training. So, so it means that we've been able to train over 50,000 youths across the country, you know, on this agri value chain. You know, that's, that's another thing. Then also we have a digital platform. So we have currently, we, we just launched our e-learning academy so it's it's basically an agri-tech and also an edu-tech platform combined together mm -hmm. for those who would love to again uh, professionalism in the agri space so we just launched that last year and today we have over 500 uh, young agropreneurs that are on board on that platform then also we have um 
the media space also. So that's that's more like the main media stream now. So we have the Agribusiness Weekend platform. So that the idea is that we bring in guests, successful farmers, stakeholders across the space. You know, regardless of what you're doing, you know, uh, we, we 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 talk about what they're doing. They want to channel some level of marketing visibility into what they're doing because that's basically the gap today in this space. You know, more of a visibility of the marketing. So that that is what we've been doing over time, and we thank God that yes. It has grown us, you know, international audience. We've, we've gotten awards, both local, both international, you know, over time. And uh, yeah, at least we, we, we are part of those who are actually adding value and changing the narrative of the agri sector today in Nigeria and Africa at large. Yeah, that's actually interesting because yeah. when you talked about the part technology has to play in your business, it's actually something that I feel like would even ha be of more interest to more millennials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now moving to agriculture as um, on a more practical level, 70% yes. of farmers in nigeria i believe you still call them farmers right oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely yeah okay because of them we see farming as one you know yeah. something that i was maybe i wasn't a uh, touche or something <laughs> so but um 70 percent of farmers in nigeria still practice subsistence farming mm. and you know agribusiness is different from agriculture yes. you know in nigeria when we talk about agriculture, people just think about whole cut classes and all and those things. Like, yeah. but Look, if you look at India, China, and you know other advanced countries, they practice proper agribusiness. We see, we see large farming equipment and all of those things. So, what do you think that Nigeria has to do? What do you think that all farmers like you can do to help us move from subsistence to more, um, I think, advanced form of farming? Yeah, that can actually solve mm. food shortage problems in Nigeria. Okay, uh, thank you for that question. You see, basically, it starts with um, the youth. That is where that can be started from because mm -hmm. basically now the average farmers, average farmer in Nigeria start comment start from the age of sixty and above. Mm -hmm. You know that's the average practical farm for sixty and above. So so but now we're beginning to change the narrative by bringing in young minds to mm -hmm. fill the space. Um, farming is practicalized basically today in the northern part of the country. Yeah. Yes, you know, we can't take it away from it. It's still basically in the north, you know. It's a culture. It's, yeah, it's basically in the north. So, but again, you ask yourself the question, who are those who are actually involved, actually being involved in the sector? Tilling the ground. Those are between the age of 60 and above. Now, between the age of 50 and downwards, below, below we have those who still have that mindset that, look, agriculture is more of... Um, the tattered person, you know, the, yeah, the wretched, exactly. you know, the old, the, the, the poor. poor but what we have done over time for the past 10 years, and which has been successful, is to change the narrative. And we, we came up with several platforms over time. Uh, we started with what we call the Agri Campus Tour about five years ago. So the idea was to go into several campuses in, in the country uh, to begin to let these young minds, basically those who are studying agriculture as a course in campuses, you know, and we've been to virtually over 100 campus today in Nigeria, across, yeah, in Nigeria, both in the West, South, East, and all that, more than 100. So the idea is to let them see the various value chain, see beyond the walls of where they are, let them see the practicality of what they're doing. That's the first thing we did. And we've been successful to, to at least um, train over 1,000 agropreneurs on that platform alone. You know, to let them see, ah, okay, I can even do this. This is what I can become. Yeah, you know, even if you're studying extend, even if you're studying mass communication, you can find yourself in this space as an extension service, adding value to the sector. That is one bit of it. Even if I technology, even if you're um, what I call a uh, tech person, you know, computer science and all that, you can build a space in agri tech. You understand? It's as large, it's as big as that. That was the first thing we did. Now the second strategy was now to begin to empower these young folks. To now begin to see how best we can diffuse them to now please themselves in adding value to each of the sector. And today we have young minds across the country that, that are doing well and they've been able to even create wealth and also uh, employ some of their students to work for them in the space their own. That was the first thing we did. The second thing we now did was uh, last year we had a project with Mastercard Foundation to train uh, to train youth, you know, basically across across uh, across Nigeria. So what we did was now to develop a strategy, you know, by discovering them and also by plugging them into various um, uh, successful uh, value chain players, FMCGs, uh, industries, and all of that. So the idea was, okay, let them get them trained first, 
Then let them now practicalize on how it's done to now begin to see the wealth part of it, the business part of it, and also how that can also create jobs for other youths out there. Now, these were what we've done over years, okay? In first of all, changing that narrative and getting them, absor absorbing them into the business. And today, I can tell you that with the level of technology advancements and improvements in Nigeria today, we have over, over 50,000 youths across the country that are doing well, you know, in the business of agriculture. You mean they have their own um, enterprise. Businesses. Yes, enterprise. Okay. Yeah, so, the so process. The process. So, so basically, you could be involved in the processing part of it. You could be involved in the practical farm part of it. And now depends, you could be involved in livestock, you could do production, you could do fishery, you could do anything, you could do, you know, name it. But the basic value, the basic thing is that you are adding value to the sector and also you are improving the sector and that definitely affects the GDP of the nation. That's why sometimes when you check the GDP, most times every, every quarter, you see that advancement and improvement yeah, in the sector. Exactly. It's because we are injecting new breeds into the sector because the aged ones of 60 and above are still going to die someday. So you need, you need people to quickly refill those, those gaps as fast as possible. That's interesting. Right, That's interesting. right. I agree with a lot of things that you said, and I was paying a lot of attention to um, the, the. I enjoy the fact that um, agriculture goes beyond um, just what it is or yes. what it is known for, and you can now take it out of just being a local business yes. to. Yeah. Uh, big corporation yeah. which is what you're trying to do here so um a lot of you to be looking at all of these sectors now listening and say well so i can key into this sector i can yeah. key into that sector still doing agriculture yes. but the most important thing is success yes so we'd like to know what the key strategies are to having a successful business in agriculture okay good that's a very critical question um if i'm to do a practical example to you um if if for example you it's all about value. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Real value. If I'm dropping, if I'm dropping this mobile phone here, okay, and I'm dropping this book here, mm -hmm. okay. Now, for for today's generation, the first thing they will pick is a mobile, mobile phone, phone yeah. not oh, the book. Yeah. Exactly. Now, why? Because this mobile phone can do one thousand times one of what this what book, book will do. do because this yeah. book also is in this mobile phone. Yeah. So that is the value. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first thing we should recognize is that. Value needs to be identified mm -hmm. in this space. Now, once you are able to know what your value is and what you want to bring on board to mm -hmm. add into the ecosystem, automatically it gives you a niche first. Right. That is number one strategy you need to identify. Now, today we have beautiful young minds in the sector like Samson Ogboli, Femi Farmer is a drone farmer, is a drone uh, drone farmer. Mm -hmm. Samson Ogboli is a soil farmer. Uh, we have tons of them across the campus. We have uh, my good friend Oyeka. Uh, of Am Crowdy and you know a lot of them in the space, but because they've been able to add value mm. from day one into the sector, that's number one strategy. Mm. Adding value to them before now you now add value now begin to expand. You know before before we, we used to have these feature phones that doesn't have all these features. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have all these mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But over time we keep yeah. adding value features. Mm -hmm. You know start things start. And that's start, why we change our phones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. You know today we have the all the almighty. Android, sorry, uh, what's it called? iPhones and the likes, mm -hmm. you know, that add new features. But that is the way it is. When, it, when, you, when you first of all identify your value, over time begin to build on the value. Then before you know it, you start getting audience from international community. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, that person is doing very well. Let's see what we could add to him. Let's see what we could inject to his business. Either it could be fund, either it could be um, material, either it could be anything. But basically, number one strategy is the value you're bringing on board as an agropreneur or as a farmer or as an entrepreneur that's interested in the sector. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the first and the only thing that I would recommend. Still on that question, I want to like make give an example. For example, I want to start my maybe meat processing business. Okay. And I want to, this is not consultation anyway, maybe I'll mm. consultation <laughs> fee. I want to start my meat processing business. Maybe I want to start selling maybe on a large scale. Yeah. Then at the same time, do leather business. So what do you think as a millennial entrepreneur, what yeah. do you think is the first thing I like I will have to do in order to market it properly? Okay, so two things are involved. Is either you study agriculture in school to understand the redolence, mm -hmm. or yeah. you do not. But if you do, you understand the redolence, probably your life, the livestock circle. But if you do not, this is what I always recommend: take your time, go and spend about one month in an abattoir. Okay. Know how it's been done. Know where the materials are. Know what is being extracted from what. That gives you a full idea of yes, this is it. 
you know, the meat business. Mm -hmm. These are these are those who are actually doing it. Then from there, you now take the next level of going online or probably, you know, have a book to read more about because there's there's difference between the the modern way of farming, yeah. okay. And and how it's been practicalized. So the only way of farming will, will, will tell you how it's been done in developed countries. The technologies, the AIs, you know, the, the digitalization that is involved in the, around it. So that will also change your horizon. But the first thing is, you must understand the rudiments, the fundamentals. You can't take it away from it. That knowledge must be the first thing you need to know. Then when that is done, you cannot begin to expand, generate a business plan. I want to start up, you know, where do I want to station my market to? Mm -hmm. Who do I want to speak with? Are they investors? Uh, those are the things that now follows. But the first thing is the knowledge. Understand. Understanding. Mm -hmm. the, the knowledge okay. is, is practical. Okay, so looking you. at it on a, um, on a national level, maybe looking at the government, yeah. you've seen that the CBN has dispersed funds over time on yeah. different food intervention programs. Yes. We had the, um, I think it was the former something program it's yeah. in my mind right now. Yeah. But we're still saying that even with all these bonds um funds still being disbursed, mm. there's really no improvement. We're still seeing shortage in food production. Mm. The food inflation is rising. The same price you bought your let's use yam as an example, it's not the same price today, and it has been steadily increasing. Mm -hmm. So what are the problems? What do you think will be your recommendation as you know in terms of solutions? For okay, that? thank you for that critical question. Uh I don't know if you've seen the the 2022 uh, budget. budget. Now, if you see the 2022 budget, you say that the, the chunk of the budget was on security. Now, the reason because um, insec insecurity has affected farmers a lot. Yes. You know, basically this year. I, I will tell you very clear that last year, we were in Niger states planting soybeans, maize, and sugar. But we can't do that again this year. Reason wow. because, yeah, reason because the level of insecurity. Mm. You know, our investors will be like, Guys, if you go there, you're on your own. The money will waste. You understand? And even if you if you try it and some level of um, bandit come and, and they chase, you, chase the farmers away, the investment is lost. There's no way you can get it back. So that had affected farmers a lot. Most of the farming areas today in Nigeria, most farmers have been deprived of that. They have to leave where they are farming currently yeah. to locate another place. You know, And that's why you see more of... Uh, um, the urban urban uh, population keep you know blowing up yeah, every every, they are every migrating. you know they migrate yeah. at every point in time. Yes. So the first thing that can solve that is security. Security needs to be tackled critically. Yeah. As in, when I say critically, I mean really critically, so that farmers can still go back to their farm base mm -hmm. and begin to farm because that's the level, that's the production. Mm -hmm. That is where it begins from. Yeah. Even if you are playing in other sectors. The production needs to be taken yeah, care of. Yeah. You know, even if you are bringing funds into the business, the production is taken care of. And that's a critical factor. And if farmers are not farming as they need to, you're going to keep having increase in prices because population keeps growing, then there's little to feed, to feed on. You understand? So automatically, the, the, the price of yam you bought last week, don't be shocked that probably the farmer that farmed that yam has been deprived of his farmland to locate on that place. So automatically, the few ones that are still farming will automatically influence the price and there will be shortages. So that is the reason why we have increase in pricing. Mm -hmm. So I would also advise that most times we should also look at improving in our warehouse because uh, post-harvest loss mm -hmm. yeah, is also yeah, a major that, thing. I was going to mention that. Yeah, it's actually, a major thing. Yeah. You know, we need to improve mm -hmm. on our post-harvest losses. We need mm -hmm. to improve on our... Um, are creating more storage, warehouses, storage, storage facilities. Storage. So we need more private sector mm -hmm. to come in and uh, provide or, or build storage facilities for farmers so that they don't lose majorly perishable commodities like tomatoes, yeah. like onions, mm -hmm. you know, and others. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, these things are available in, la in large quantities, but we need more storage facilities to help us store these things. And mm -hmm. it, we believe that private sector partnership is also needed to help us grow the sector effectively. Yeah. Okay. So for my final question to you would be, um, what are the, um, you know, across the agricultural value chain, what are the um, areas that millennials need to look out for? Now, earlier you mentioned, um, you mentioned tomatoes. I'm very specific mm. about tomatoes because we consume it a, a lot, lot in yeah, Nigeria. Yeah. We make soup stews out of yeah, these things. Yeah. And even when it comes to transportation, you see a lot of damage yeah. before it even gets, gets to, yeah. to mm. you, know, the, you know. And yeah, the, right. kind of, the kind of um, technology used to transport transport these things are not even conducive for mm. the products to survive the journey. Yeah. So what are these sectors that you think that the 
the um, millennials need to look out for? Okay, f first thing first, uh, if you want to start as a millennial, mm -hmm. I'll tell you to start um, on a short term basis. Mm -hmm. Don't go and spend all your money, you know, in a long term basis agricultural business. So what I always advise is start with the little ones you can quickly manage and doesn't have that long lifespan, like veggies. Yeah, I know. think I, I see that on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. vegetables. Yes. Start, start with vegetables. Um, yeah. My friend Samson Abuli, that's what he does basically. Start with vegetables. Within three months, you're beginning to... So even if you invest 100,000, so within three months, you can check that you can profit or loss. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, start with all those veggies, tomatoes, onions, you know, cucumber, you know, very small things. So with that, your first checklist, are you making profit or loss? Then mm -hmm. before you now begin to expand into other value chain, you learn, then you, you, you go into it, you learn, you go into it, you learn, you go into it. Because um, most of these veggies, we eat them on a daily basis. Yes. You know, either as smoothies or either as what we cook in our houses yeah. and all that. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Then second thing is, um, there's a lot of opportunity now in technology. Yeah. Technology space is quite big now. So so we are even looking at, for us now, we're, we are very soon, we're going to create uh, an agri-tech hub just like we have you know, fintech hubs. Fintech, yeah. yes. You know, we're that have, would be great. We're going to have an agri hub yeah. whereby we're going to have tons of millennials, mm -hmm. agropreneurs, youth mm -hmm. that will come in, create innovative platforms that would help solve problems farmers are facing today, i.e. climate change, soil, mm -hmm. you know, several things, transportation, cold like. chain, storage, you know, things that easily could be done, you know, to solve problems, challenges facing the sector at the moment. So th that is basically the advice. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's actually very interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, my own fear is that I hope that it's not just like surface, you know, something, <laughs> but as you know, the real work is at the farm level, is that's where people are actually tilling the ground. So it's easy to come up with, I've seen people who, maybe, uh, friends maybe started in Canada and their project was, oh, do, start up a business in Nigeria. Yeah. And, they, and the first thing they did was, oh, I culture, I culture, and the business never, Mm. Like they even had investors mm -hmm. that invested in the business, but they were just bottlenecks in Nigeria and all those things. So it's good. We might have ideas, but my own fear is that I don't know. They might not be able. To I think that's why we need the experts. Their, I think that's yes, why we need the experts. We might not be able to implement them due to you know the terrain of our you know of Nigeria government issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, I hope you know, those things are resolved. Looking at okay, looking at um crowdfunding when it comes to agriculture. Yeah. Uh, recently, a uh, we like a Ponzi scheme now. Okay. Recently <laughs> crashed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've seen people pull funds together for farming yeah. and um, investment. And they give them guarantee yeah. of investment 17%, 100%. Yes. And people still invest <laughs> yeah. blindly. Yeah. So what can you say about these issues? Because we've seen many platforms come up as agri-investment yes. schemes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. Do they really actually plant these crops, or do they just it's just a scheme or pyramid uh, scheme? You I see, the, the 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 scheme in the business has been there for a very long time, but we thank God now that uh, SEC has done justice to that yes. the regulation, uh, which was released this year. So even if you're starting up any Ponzi scheme on agriculture, mm -hmm. SEC will knock you down. Most validate right. the process. That's the first thing because uh, unfortunately people are, are fall victim. Yes. A lot of them, yeah. you know, and, and the major targets are pensioners, mm -hmm. retirees, yes. you know, retirees, pensioners. Yeah. So and uh, our mothers who are looking for and some greedy farmers mm -hmm. who are looking for easy money. money. Mm -hmm. And farming takes time. So 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 that there are very few ones that that are doing that are actually assessed and are doing well regarding that. Mm -hmm. While we have lots of fraudsters out there that claims that they're actually the Ponzi scheme. How can you like differentiate? Yeah, differentiate. I think it's yeah. very important. This particular one that crashed, mm -hmm. it was everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, we did not rest. Billboards, everything. everywhere. So, rest. how can you but, tell the difference between a Ponzi scheme, agro, yeah. agro scheme, or an illegit illegitimate business? One, yes. Now, SEC, if you're, if you're investing into any of these Ponzi, the first thing you ask them is, are you SEC compliant? Okay. That's the first thing. I said compliant. We said, uh, no, don't put your money there. Okay. Don't put your money. But I said, okay, we have SEC regulation and they show you this certificate by SEC for us to run this. Mm -hmm. You are good to go. Mm -hmm. But if you're not SEC compliant, I would not advise anybody to try it or to start it because SEC has made it clear. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been regulated now so that because there have been they've, they've, lots of people who have even died. I know, yes. I know friends, I know families that have died on this course journey, losing most money, about 40 million naira. Wow. To a Ponzi scheme, yes, you know, even collecting from friends, you know, yeah. and all that. Forty yeah. million, I eventually got high BP and died. Jesus. 
you know, so those were the calam those were the things that actually made sex say, look, we need to put a stop to this. Mm -hmm. And sex has done justice by, by releasing a regulation. Even even to all insurance companies that are even backing them yeah. up, mm -hmm. they need yeah. to be, you know, set compliance and for so eventually you may, you may not have two mm -hmm. that are eventually, you know, legit legit, okay. you know, in the whole <laughs> For the, for the skin. I'm telling you. Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. That, so the first thing, ask them, are you still compliant? Mm -hmm. They said, uh, please don't, don't, don't write. Right, mm -hmm. right. That's good information. I hope that the viewers are listening. Yes, so please. <laughs> <laughs> because Ponzi skills are something we always reiterate every time. Yeah. yeah. For people to be aware of. Okay, so that takes us to the fun segment. Yeah. So <laughs> and away from the seriousness of the day. <laughs> All right. So um, we like to know your outside work and outside um, corporate farmers. What do you do? Mm. What do you do for fun? What do you like to? How do you shy? <laughs> the word. <Wow>. Okay, <laughs> basically for me, yeah. Um, basically for me, yeah. I that, that I struggle a lot with. Oh, work life balance. Why is it always like that? Balance, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it's not right, but I struggle a lot because you see, maybe it's the Nigerian factor. And you know, as um, as an author, I still trying to ensure that I put things in place. Table, you know, yeah. you know. So you, we, there's really no room, but we're creating it. Mm -hmm. So the only like, time I ha you know, like reading, uh, uh, no, no, it doesn't count. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, most times maybe maybe when I'm on a road trip, you know, road trip okay. sometimes get me off. You know, to to take time to to reminisce and all that. The music, mm -hmm. I love music a lot. Okay. And don't be shocked that also. What's your favorite song? Well, it might not be a song, it might be an artist. Okay, what's your favorite you artist? You know, uh, for my artist, it's uh, this Nigerian guy. Um, ah, no, 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 his name. They are young folks out there. David O. Whiskey. No, 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 David O. Bonner Boy. I don't know Bonner. Ah, 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 Bonner ah, 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 so which one? Bonner Boy Slander. Yeah, Bonner Boy Slander. No, no, I, 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 I know that mighty great guys, mm -hmm. but they are this young, I think it's CK or something. One, two, two, three. Yeah, CK. Yeah, you know, CK. And uh, there are a couple of young folks, uh, Temi, mm -hmm, you know, yeah. a couple of, you know, a lot of young folks doing great stuff today in Nigeria. Rema, mm -hmm, yeah. you know, and the likes. You know, I, I also love watching wrestling too. That's, that, I love okay. watching wrestling. First it, person it, to see wrestling. It keeps me okay. off, okay. you know, I really enjoy yeah, watching wrestling. Yeah, it makes sense. I love, I love watching I follow it back to back. <laughs> yeah, hey, now that one is fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. Every week I follow it back to back, you know, so that, that's things that actually keep me right. at least to, to just take off stress a little bit. Okay. okay. Well, 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 well. Let, to to wrap today's up. Uh, have you seen the recent um, T.Y. Savage song? Uh, Somebody, song. Yeah, yeah, with Brandy. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen it? Okay. So we're just gonna do that little thing that she does. Let me let me, let me show you how it's done. Okay. It goes one, two, three. So can you do it? Do, do it again. Okay. One, one two, two, three. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Two, three, four, <laughs> go. One. one Two, three. three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got it right. Yeah, you did. All right, then. All right. Thanks for joining us today on Millennial Talk. I believe you've learned one or two things about the agribusiness and the agricultural sector in Nigeria and its opportunities. For more information regarding the stock market, financial information, and market intelligence, visit www.prochierng.com. Till next time. Bye. Bye.